let's kick it off. Mm. Your first choice was Al Jackson Jr. So, so why him? My number one. My number one choice. Um, why him? Because he's simple. He's solid. Um, I first heard of him back in, in grammar school in Bishop's Castle. And I, I, I'll digress a little. Uh, I was in... Someone told me about this singer, Otis Redding. He just had this, this song called Dock of the Bay. And it was okay. I mean, it was a little ballad and, and the drums behind it didn't really stand out. But I loved the guy's voice. And, and my friend said, you've got to get this album called Otis Blue. And it's one of the all-time great, uh, great albums. Paul Rogers cites it as one of his favorite albums. So I put it on. And the first track that I put the needle on accidentally was a track called Down in the Valley. And I thought, what is this? The drums were just so solid and loud. And um, Midnight Hour had just come out that same, I believe that same year. I'm sure someone will correct me. But that had Al Jackson playing on it, Wilson Pickett's Midnight Hour. And I just fell in love with this guy's simple style. And, and um, that was it, simple and solid. I read about him. Uh, he was a musician himself. He played bass, he played piano, but his main thing was drums. And uh, he today, he's till, uh, still to this day, he's my number one influence. Al Jackson Jr., wonderful. Fantastic. And he played, obviously, with Booker T and the MGs, and he worked with some incredible people, Elvis and Aretha and Eric Clapton, and you can list them off, can't you, really? Did you ever get to meet yeah. him? I know he died when he was young, but did you ever get the chance to meet him? It's funny you should mention that because when we were out in LA back in the mid seventies, a bad company were, um, was sequestered in Malibu of all places. And we were going to play in Memphis. And I thought, well, number one, I got to go and see, uh, Maclemore uh, Avenue where the stack studio was, which I eventually did and saw his kit. It was a tiny kit, like a little. 20 inch bass drum and a little 12 by 8 tom tom. It was a four piece kit, very small. Uh, but it was during that week that I heard he'd been uh, murdered. Um, some shenanigans went on in Sax Records, and I heard that, that it was a, a burglary went wrong, but um, uh, rumor was that it was something a little more sinister than that. But poor Al was. Uh, was murdered, and I never got to meet him. One of the big regrets of my life. But uh, I honour him by mentioning him in in any interviews I do about about uh, uh, drumming influences. So he's my number one guy. <laughs> <laughs> 